Hi everybody, and welcome to video number one in chapter 20. Here we'll be looking at accounting for leases. Okay, after studying this chapter, you should be, one, able to describe the environment related to leasing transactions. Number two, explain the accounting for finance leases. And number three, explain the accounting for operating leases. And finally, four, discussing the accounting and reporting for special features of lease arrangements. Here, if we preview chapter 21 a little more, uh, the leasing environment, we'll talk about lessees, the advantages of lessees, and finance and operating leases. All right, finance leases. Here, we'll look at lessee accounting, lessor accounting, and sales type lease example. Under operating leases here, we'll look at lessee accounting and lessor accounting. Okay, there's some special accounting problems related to leasing. Uh, one, residual values. Number two, other lease adjustments. Number three, bargain purchase options. Number four, short-term leases. And finally, five, presentation and decision analysis. All right, let's get into the meat of the chapter. When we're here, we will describe the environment related to leasing transactions. The leasing environment, um, a lease is a contractual agreement between a lessor and a lessee that gives the lessee the right to use specific property owned by the lessor for a specified period of time. The largest group of leased equipment involves one, information technology equipment, two, transportation, trucks, aircraft, rail, etc. Number three, construction, and finally four, agriculture. What do companies lease? Uh, a variety of things. Here, Apple. Um, they, they lease various equipment and facilities, retail space, etc. Exxon, here, they're going to uh, take a look at drilling equipment, tankers, service station, and other properties. J.P. Morgan Chase um, have some non-cancelable operating leases for premises and equipment used for their banking purposes. And I'll let you read the rest of these on your own. I think you get the idea. What are the advantages of leasing? The less ease, one, have 100% financing at a fixed rate. Number two, protection against obsolescence. Three, flexibility. And four, less costly financing. To the lessor, one, it often provides profitable interest margins. Number two, it can stimulate sales of the lessor's product. Number three, it often provides tax benefits to various parties in the lease. And number four, it can provide a high residual value to the lessor. Okay, so number one here, if the lease transfers control or ownership of the underlying asset to a lessee, then it is classified as a finance lease. In a finance lease, the lessee, number two, takes ownership or consumes the substantial portion of the underlying asset over the lease term. Legally, the lessor may retain ownership, but the substance of the transaction is such that the lessee assumes the benefits and risks of ownership. And number three, all leases that do not meet any of the finance lease tests 
are classified as operating leases. In an operating lease, the lessee obtains the right to use the underlying asset, but not the ownership of the asset itself. Okay, let's take a look at an illustration here. Gammon Incorporated leases one floor of an office building for five years at, to Winco. At the end of the lease, Win, the lessee, vacates the floor. Gammon, the lessor, can then lease the floor to another tenant. Is this arrangement a finance or operating lease? This lease is an operating lease because the lease conveys right of use but does not transfer control or ownership. The lease controls the leased asset only, the lessee controls the leased asset only during the five year lease. As we will see, the accounting for a lease classified as a finance lease, transfer of control or ownership, or an operating lease, transfer of right of use, reflects differences in control conveyed in a lease arrangement. Let's look at the classification tests with an illustration. One, transfer of ownership test. Does the lease transfer ownership of the underlying asset to the lessee at the end of the lease term? If it's a yes, we're going to classify that as a finance lease. Purchase option test. Does the lease grant the lessee an option to purchase the underlying asset that the lessee is reasonably certain to exercise? If yes, we will classify that as a finance lease. Lease term test. Is the lease term for a major part of the remaining economic of the underlying asset? And if it's yes, again, we will classify that as a finance lease. The present value test. Does the present value of the sum of, one, the lease payments, and two, any lease residual value, guarantee not reflected in the lease payments equal or exceed substantially all of the underlying assets fair value? If yes, again, a finance lease. And lastly, the alternative use test. Is the underlying asset of such a specialized nature that, is it, that it is expected to have no alternative use to the lessor at the end of the lease term? If yes, it's a finance lease. If no to any of these, to these, then it's going to be classified as an operating lease. The purchase option test, we're going to go through each, each of these. The purchase option test is met if it is reasonably certain that the lessee will exercise the option. The, less, the lease purchase option allows the lessee to purchase the property for a price that is significantly lower than the underlying assets expected fair value at the date the option becomes exercisable. This is called a bargain purchase option. And here's an illustration. Brett's delivery service leases a Honda Accord for $499 per month for 40 months with an option to purchase the Accord for $1,000 at the end of the lease. The estimated fair value of the Honda Accord is $10,000 at the end of 40 months. Does this lease have a bargain purchase option? Clearly it does. The 1000 option is clearly a bargain purchase option. Therefore, Brett's, Brett's accounts for this lease as a finance lease. The lease term test. Number one, if the lease term is 75% or greater of the economic life of the leased asset, 
the lease meets the lease term test and finance lease treatment is appropriate. We call that the 75% test. Number two, the lease term is generally considered to be fixed, non-cancelable term of the lease. Number three, a bargain renewal option can extend this period. And number four, at the commencement of the lease, the difference between the renewal rental and the expected fair rental must be great enough to make exercise of the option to renew reasonably certain. Okay, let's take a look at an illustration. The Home De Depot leases Dell PCs for two years at a rental of $100 per month per computer. In addition, Home Depot can lease these computers for $10 per month per computer for another two years. What is the term of this lease? The solution would be that the lease clearly offers a bargain renewal option going from $100 monthly rental down to $10. Home Depot should consider the lease term for these computers to be four years, not two years. All right, lease payments. Lease payments are fixed payments, one. Two, variable payments that are based on an index or a rate. Number three, guaranteed residual value. And four, payments related to purchase or termination options that the lessee is reasonably certain to exercise. So here is an example of the variable payments in substance fixed. Okay, facts. On January 1, 2025, Jose Company leases an airplane for six years. The annual lease payments are a million dollars per year, payable at the beginning of each year, annuity due basis. In addition, the lease payment increases $30,000 every year. The question is, what are the lease payments in 26 and 2027? Well, the solution would be, on July 1, 2026, the, the lease payment is a million and thirty thousand dollars. That's a million dollars plus thirty thousand dollars. On January 1, 2027, it goes up again by thirty thousand dollars to a million sixty thousand dollars. Given that the amount of the payments is known from year to year, the base payment plus the annual increase. Such payments are considered fixed payments. Variable lease payments are illustrated with this example with the Jose Company, who leases this airplane for six years. The annual lease payments are a million dollars per year, payable at the beginning of each year, an annuity due basis. In addition, though, Assume that the lease payments are adjusted each year by the change in the Consumer Price Index, CPI. So the question is, do we assume that the CPI is 100 at January 1 and increases to 104 at January 1, 2026? What is the payment on January 1, 2026? Well, it's going to go up 4% or $40,000. Because the amount of the variable payment from year to year is not known at the start of the lease, the payment is not included in determining the present value of the lease liability at the beginning of the year. This additional payment of 40000 is recognized as an expense in the period it is incurred, 2026. And similarly, when the lease payments vary with the performance measure, example, a sales at a store location, asset usage, the variable amounts will be expensed in the period incurred. That looks like a good place to stop this video. And when we return, we'll stop look at the termination option. Until that time, bye for now.